Olá, pessoal, boa tarde. Estamos aqui novamente e agora com o episódio número 13 da websérie O Mundo Empreendedor, Expedição Israel. Estaremos aqui toda quinta, uma e meia, sempre com um convidado de peso, falando sobre os assuntos mais relevantes no ambiente de inovação e empreendedorismo aqui em Israel, um dos maiores polos tecnológicos do mundo. Eu sou Daniel Scaba, CEO da Ibitec, que tem aproximado esse rico ecossistema de inovação de Israel de vocês, do público brasileiro. Já estou aqui há quase 30 anos, vivenciando inovação e tecnologia em todas as suas formas, na faculdade, no exército, em multinacionais e como empreendedor. Agora, aqui com vocês, mergulhando nesse mundo de inovação e empreendedorismo. E antes de chamar o nosso convidado especial de hoje, gostaria de chamar, como sempre, a nossa Bárbara para passar uns recados. Olá, Bárbara, boa tarde. Boa tarde, olá pessoal, sejam muito bem-vindos ao nosso quadro. E bom, vou trazer aqui, como sempre, alguns materiais para complementar aí o aprendizado de vocês. Então, para quem já acompanha a gente, já sabe que está tudo no nosso manual de bordo. Se você ainda não acessou, corre agora para se inscrever, porque lá tem todos os materiais que a gente já falou sobre até hoje. Além disso, vocês também vão ter acesso a todos os nossos episódios anteriores, né? Então, com certeza, conhecimento aí para agregar no seu dia a dia vai ter. E para hoje, a gente também trouxe alguns materiais complementares. Um deles é o artigo falando sobre como realizar uma transformação digital nas empresas e o outro falando sobre a indústria 4.0. Então, com certeza, aí alguns pontos para vocês que querem conhecer um pouquinho mais sobre esse ecossistema e entender como aplicar isso também no seu dia a dia. E, claro, lembrar vocês de participarem do nosso insight premiado, tá, gente? Como que funciona? Durante o nosso bate-papo aqui, a nossa conversa, vocês vão poder tirar um print da tela postar no seu Instagram, marcando o Grupo Voito, e escrever ali qual é o insight que você gostaria de compartilhar. Nisso, já está feito, você, basta você postar, e você já vai estar participando ali, e pode ganhar um kit da Voito, muito fofo, uma caneca, uma meia, uma máscara, só ganhando mesmo para você saber. E também é, pode ganhar um livro do Excel da nossa editora, então você pode se aprofundar um pouquinho mais nesse software, entender como funciona. No mais, vamos lá, que o nosso bate-papo hoje vai, com certeza, explodir a mente de todo mundo aí. Mas vai mesmo. Obrigadíssimo, Bárbara. Então, pessoal, now I would like to invite Avi Rosenfeld for a chat about visual technologies, how to make the tech world easier. Hey, Avi. Hey, Daniel. Nice to see you. Nice to Thank see you. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, thanks for being here with us. Avi has, an, has a BA in Communication and Management by Michlala Naminal, an MBA <laughs> by, yes, and, and an MBA by Tel Aviv University. Avi led the sales department of several Israeli companies all over the world. And today he serves as executive VP of sales in Taxi that revolutionized the remote customer support. So Avi, tell us, what is Taxi? So thank you very much again. You know, in Taxi, we develop a, a visual remote assistant platform to help enterprises to support their customer in, in, a, in the most efficient way, uh, simplify the, the, the process of support, enabling the agent or the technician to be able to see uh, the device or the problem And by that, to provide the necessary support without the need to be on the ground. Um, this has been developed over the last few years. We've been able to uh, work with more than 100 tier one organization in the telco, medical, insurance, uh, companies like Verizon, AT&T, Claro, uh, uh, insurance company like Hippo and Achmea in Netherlands, uh, utilities company, all try to be more efficient about the way customer gets support. And we develop a platform that uh, enable these companies to simply in 10 seconds send a link to the end customer, either by SMS or 
by email or uh, in any in, in WhatsApp. You click on the SMS, nothing to be downloaded. Very simple. In 10 seconds, the supporting side can see the problem, can see uh, the connectivity, can see the issues, can see the damage if there is a damage, and can decide immediately what should be the corrective measures. Whether they need to send someone on the on the ground, maybe they can help in improving the situation from remote. Uh, and with that, we we help uh, many of our customers. So Taxi has been around for a while already, since uh, 2014. So what were the main milestones of Taxi during this last seven, eight years? Well, the, the, the company is, is growing very fast. I think that uh, we've, we've been able to, to sustain our leadership in the market based on very advanced technology. Uh, I, I will give two examples. One example will, will sound... A bit simple, but it's very sophisticated. We, we've been able to uh, register a patent on the fact that we can open a web RTC session, a video session between two sides with no need to download any application. It means that I sent you a link, you click on it, automatically it open the back camera of your phone, any smartphone, and the browser, and the one that sent and you don't see immediately what is the issue. Uh, this we have a patent on that. It's it's, uh, it's called Appless uh, support system with no application. Uh, and and we also uh, one one of the biggest milestones is that we started to use a lot of artificial intelligence technology and augmented reality. It means that with that with this technology uh, we can improve. Uh, the support mechanism uh, reduce a lot of the cost and save a lot of bothers to our customers. And um, I can explain if you want about that. Yeah, but I think the, the augmented reality is very interesting here because uh, in the in the beginning of this technology, uh, it was like a game. You know, my kids love it, and I guess your kids love it. And then yes. you take this augmented reality and took it for a reality to a, a, a real service for the customer. How was the customer acceptance of, uh, you know, oh, I am, this is a game or this is real? You are here for real to help me. C customer's re reaction is, is fantastic. You know, first we, we even in, in the normal setup of our support where they get a link and they can see we can use all the annotation and augmented reality to actually explain them what to do, what to connect, where to connect it, to take one cable or to take one port and put together. And it's very easy. You know, they say uh, one picture equal to 1,000 words. Uh, imagine what videos uh, come to that. So we, we are able to uh, simplify our explanation to customer, and they love it. They immediately understand it's reducing the frustration that uh, when, when talking to someone that cannot see the problem and they need to repeat themselves to explain the situation and the support agent does not understand, now we can see, not only that he can see, he can play and, and draw using augmented reality what the solution should look like. And customer understand very easy. And that's uh, one, one of the main benefits of uh, using our solution is the improvement in customer satisfaction sometimes by more than 50%. Customers are delighted from the fact that they understand how to make the right measure in order to overcome an issue. Yeah, this is... a. Uh, uh, so I understand that one of the, the points here is actually instead of sending a technician to your home, you actually you have the remote support. And, uh, you know, I heard uh, a sentence the other day that waiting for a technician is as bad as going to the dentist. Yeah. So, uh, so do you see actually uh, also not only to have a great support from remote, not the part, okay, the technician will arrive from 9 to 12 on Wednesday. So do you see actually, uh, you know, several good acceptance from the customers in this sense? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, would, I, would even, I would even take it one step before. First, they, they love not to wait for the technician, but the technician come to them virtually and helping them with the solution. Second, 
In many cases, they don't have to wait for the agent. They don't need to call. They sometimes go online, explain the problem, get the link from us. And we also, when I mentioned AI, we're also developing a artificial intelligence self-service track. It means that the mobile itself guide the customer how to troubleshoot, how to connect devices with no need to wait to anybody on the line. So that's, of course, reducing the level of frustration. I hate calling contact center and wait on the line until someone is, is answering me. And if I get a link while I'm waiting that will explain to me in a very sophisticated way how to overcome an issue, that's great. But, but you are right. Um, after that, after the expense situation, uh, if there is a way to see the problem, to explain to it and fix it without the need to send technician, let's say in 30% of the cases, in 40% of the cases, that's, that's pure win-win uh, situation for the companies, for the technician that can make remote assistant, for the customer. And I would say that uh, during the, the pandemic, this was becoming more and more an issue. And, and right in the start of the pandemic, uh, we saw, uh, we, we made some surveys and we saw that customer preferred the technician will not come to their house when it's becoming more and more dangerous. So whenever we can now modify a solution to be support for remote, it's becoming the new normal. Customers expect not to have a technician visit if they can get the remote assistant by tools like taxi uh, without the need to wait to, to the technician coming in to your house. At some point, just one example, I would say Verizon and Vodafone were uh, the two of our customers that were early adopters on that. And during the pandemic, Verizon decided not to go into people's houses unless it's emergency. Even if they couldn't fix the problem remotely using taxi, what they did, they came to the house, put the equipment outside the door, went to the car, the technician opened the taxi platform with the customer and explained the customer what it needs to be done from the car in order not to go into the house. This is a very interesting because uh, we've seen during the, this crisis, during the COVID-19 crisis, that several trends accelerated remote yes. medicine remote education e-commerce of course so uh, you're explaining maybe a, a new thing for us which is remote technical support and uh, so and some of these trends will disappear and some of them will become as you mentioned the new normal so you believe that the remote technical support will become the new normal of course we see that we see that now uh, we, we see that now with full force you know come customers and companies that uh, got used to support remotely without the need to send technician on site unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and also customers save a lot of time. They don't need to wait until next Monday when the technician will come immediately on the spot. They open taxi. They see the problem, getting the explanation with annotation, with augmented reality. We, we're using artificial intelligence. So... We identify the device, identify the problem, can you clearly recommend. Uh, everybody got in love with that type of solution. They don't want to go back now go back. and call, wait on the line until someone will answer, uh, wait until technician will come to your house. Uh, I think we learned that we need to be more efficient and uh, we see that because we don't need to educate the market anymore. Everybody understand what is remote technical support and for us, it's becoming more easy uh, to work with more and more organizations. Now, that's interesting. You also mentioned before that not only the technical uh, remote support, remote technical support, but also a virtual support. I understand her name is Eve, your, uh, Eve. your virtual uh, uh, technician. So we, we hear all over the place that, uh, you know, people are afraid that uh, my job will be substituted by a robot. So uh, do you feel a, th a technician threatened by Eve uh, that uh, she will substitute their, her, their job? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. We just give technician more tools to provide 
uh, a, more <coughs> a more efficient support. So in the case of technician, for them, our platform save them they need to go on site sometimes they need to go two hours three hours i don't know in brazil is a huge country i don't need to tell you how much technician need to cover and and they don't need to do it anymore with with visual platform they can immediately see the issue or even if they have to come on site they can see what they need to bring with them what expert to send the entire process becoming more and more efficient and they save a lot of money every year but in case of eve uh, we we are not replacing Eve is, is our virtual remote assistant. It's a self-service process. You can do installation to any device. If we build the, the artificial intelligent journey, it will take you through installation of device, whether it's a it's a router or coffee machine or vacuum cleaner, it will help you to set it up. We like to see ourselves as replacing user manuals, not technicians. So not technicians. we are diminishing the user manual of the word. Instead of open the user manual, you open Eve, and Eve will guide you through, okay, it will tell you, show me the device, she will identify it, show me the cable, she will identify it, show me the connector, where, and she will guide you where to put all the connector, how to put it to replace the user manual. And nobody likes user manual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So, Avi, Taxi today is spread all over the world. You have uh, uh, you have customers in Europe, in Asia, in uh, Latin America, North America, and you deal with different cultures, different societies. So can you tell us how the Israel innovation ecosystem is a differentiator in this sense? I, I, I think, you know, we... Our reality in the way the country is shaped dictating the way we, we look at, at problems. And, and I think that as an Israeli startup, you know, Israeli is the second biggest startup creator of the world. Second by numbers, not relatively. Relative per population, we are by far the first. By but far. Second after the US. And, and with comparing a 10 million country to third, uh, 350 million people country. So I, I think... We, we tend to look at, at problems in a very creative ways. And you see that in agriculture, you see that in, 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 medi in health medicine, the way we, we treated the, the pandemic to find ways to, to cover the entire population with vaccination. You see that with defense, you see that uh, we always try to find very creative ways uh, to, to problems. And we detected that Technical support is quite old and quite the methodologies are not fitting the right the, the, the new world and and we were able to develop a platform that simplified the way we provide technical support the way we automate processes the way we enable uh, to reduce the friction of people and frustration and give them tools to get better support in real time immediately without the need to wait. And, and yes, definitely the, the Israeli culture contributed to that because we see that everywhere. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not the first uh, startup, Israeli startup that I'm personally leading to, uh, to grow. And, and I see that all the time, you know, we know how to adapt to the reality. Nice. Uh, Avi, we got a few questions from our audience and uh, I would like to pass them for you. So one of them is actually, what are the main breakthrough technologies that were used by Taxi to develop the platform? I don't want to go into too many technical uh, concepts, but, but the, the, the entire platform is first and foremost based on computer vision AI. We, uh, it's, it's not only the, the, the advanced uh, scenario. It's not, not, not only that the, uh, we see the issue, it's not a simple video, we try to understand what we see, we try to learn the situation, to get the, the analysis and make the conclusion. So we are basing our uh, assumption on artificial intelligence. On the basic level, of course, it's a, it's a very strong video platform that was developed in a way that you can use that immediately. Consumer can simply click a link and open that with no need to, to download anything on, 
or to use with too much technology. So simplicity and artificial intelligence, I would say these are the two concepts. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And, uh, and looking to the future, uh, how do you see the main challenges that taxi face today to facilitate even further the user experience? I think I think that the world and, and taxi I think is one of the leaders in that are looking into automation and self-service and uh, not only that we don't want technician to support us remotely we want automation to do it for us so we we want we expect to get links by us as I mentioned through the entire process of installation or support or troubleshooting and uh, And if we can make these automated as much as we can, that, that, that will be, of course, the future of, of technical support and not only technical support, also product registration, uh, uh, telemedicine, everything that is related and can be... Uh, to the customer journey, right? The, the, the right customer journey, I think this right is... The, customer, the, to build the journey for the customer, to, to understand the needs, Um, maybe enable him to collect the information upload it and somebody will take care for the for the resolution in in, in a very fast and efficient way and uh, Avi I would like you to share your vast experience as a sales leader all over the world so what would be your tips your message to young startups that want to become a global successful leader a startup as taxi is today adapt all the time analyze the situation understand the needed changes in your concept and do it don't don't wait for the market to bang you on the head uh, you know one of the biggest example is covid 19 pandemic and crisis you it's a, our our solution was developed for the contact center for agents sitting in contact center people calling them they can use taxi during the pandemic we saw that the main users are not contact center anymore our field technician and we needed to adapt our solution to fit field technician because we are not running on desktop anymore we are running on mobile devices and tablet and and technician from the car from the field needs to be able to see remotely and So we made all the necessary changes in order to fit their needs. That's one very simple example. Uh, but sometimes startups and entrepreneurs come with concept about the market. They discover there are some modifications, some changes in, in the need, and they don't adapt too fast. The, the secret to succeed in a startup is the ability to change while you are understanding that it's not There is a need to change and uh, in in our culture I think we are used to that we used to think outside the box we used to adapt to to changing environment and 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 I hope more will adopt their this capability to be aware to be aware about the the customer needs and be able to be to be agile uh, okay that, that's a very, yeah that's a very good one and uh, and do you see something special uh, you mentioned before, But uh, you know the, the Brazilian startups uh, they initially think about the Brazilian market and uh, the Israeli startups uh, they don't have this luxury because uh, we don't have really a, a market it's a, only a lab if I would say and uh, so how uh, uh, would be your message to how you should look globally uh, maybe at the beginning you can do it later. As you said, we don't have the luxury of looking at the Israeli market. We, from day one, looking at, at the bigger markets like Brazil, like, uh, like the US, like uh, China, depending. But I, I, I think if, if, if I will crystallize the one principle for success is focus. If you decide you're developing something for a certain market, focus on that market. Learn the business case. If you get into a conclusion that this market, Brazil, will support your business case, do only that. Focus on Brazil to fit your solution to the Brazilian market. And only then, when you 
manage to break through and prove to yourself that uh, that you can do that, go to the to the big open world. In Israel, as much as we think about the global market, in many in many new solution that we bring to market, uh, don't, don't tell it to anybody. But we we use Israel we use Israel companies as test bed, not in the bad way of it, but in the in the good way. And we we try our solution. Israeli companies, Israeli customers are open to that. They, it's not only startup. Also, the, the the Israeli customers, mobile operator, they used to Israeli startup coming to them and and try to to try all kind of things, and they're open for that. And yeah. and we use our solution. We try our solution in real environment with relatively smaller Israeli companies, and then we take it to the world. But the 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 main the main recommendation is focus decide on the market that you are developing your your tools your solution and focus on that fantastic yeah. avi it is always a pleasure chatting with you thank you so much for being here with us today You're welcome and we need to drink a coffee together now that uh, uh, we were the all right that's great. <laughs> thank you avi, very much thank you so much oi barbara o que, que você achou desse papo com a Avi? Esse futuro aí vai ser tudo uma realidade aumentada mesmo? Esse futuro do presente, né, Daniel? Porque assim, o assim que eu vi já existe. É, isso mesmo. Incrível, Bom, mas vai né? ser muito interessante, principalmente porque eu acho que vai ajudar o nosso público também a enxergar realmente soluções que envolvem ali essa questão da inteligência artificial, como que a gente pode usar, de fato, a indústria 4.0 ali em algo que, às vezes, a gente nem tinha parado para pensar, né? Porque ele estava falando ali sobre, por exemplo, o uso de manuais, né? Às vezes, realmente, a coisa mais difícil é você conseguir identificar o que você precisa fazer só através de um pequeno manual ali, que nem sempre está bem explicado, né? Vai de produto para produto. E aí, na verdade, você encontra ali numa empresa uma solução que vai te mostrando exatamente o que fazer. Você imagina, a Eva, um cabo. imagina a Eva te explicando. Não, Bárbara, o cabo não é aí. Você tem que botar naquele ali, ali, com vermelhinho, ali mesmo. Exato. E para mim, uma das coisas que foi mais legal também, que ele comentou ali no final, é de você realmente identificar também o seu público. Então, ele conseguiu, né? A empresa conseguiu identificar uma necessidade. Olha, é, as pessoas têm dificuldade nisso e hoje em dia elas não querem mais ficar dependendo de um suporte que às vezes vá precisar ir até o local ou que às vezes não explica tão bem de forma remota. As pessoas querem ser isso com praticidade. Então, eles identificaram ali um problema que eles gostariam de, de resolver. E como ele falou, né, teve essa visão criativa de conseguir olhar para o problema de forma criativa. É, e no final, eles também tiveram o um foco de identificar qual era o público que eles gostariam de atingir. Então, achei muito legal também ele falando sobre implementar ali algumas coisas iniciais em Israel e depois ir expandindo para o mundo, né? Isso é muito interessante, porque realmente a gente precisa ter aquela questão do early adopters, né? Que são as primeiras pessoas que vão ali investir no seu produto e vão avaliar para depois você começar a expandir isso para o mundo, para outras pessoas e realmente colocar isso no mercado global. É, então, eu achei muito bacana essa questão do foco, que nem sempre a gente vai precisar começar global, né? Depende muito de onde a gente está, qual é o nosso nicho. Às vezes, a gente tem uma escadinha ainda para percorrer até chegar é, lá. Eu, eu, ele mencionou duas mensagens interessantes. Uma é a do foco, mas, por outro lado, a agilidade e a flexibilidade. Quer dizer, então, por um Exato. lado, ok, é isso que eu quero, mas... Se eu preciso mudar, como é que eu faço isso rápido? Quer dizer, esses, o bom balanço, esses dois, é muito importante. Exato. Principalmente na, na pandemia, né? A gente viu quantos negócios não precisaram se reinventar da noite para o dia e Exatamente. nem todos conseguiram. Nem então, a gente precisa ter essa questão da agilidade, porque, às vezes, da noite para o dia pode ser algo essencial ali que vai determinar se o seu negócio vai se manter ou não. Como é que a gente sabe, né? Na... Em momento de crise, tem quem chora e tem quem vem, tem quem vem de lenço, né? Eu acho que até que se vendeu lenço nessa pandemia. Exato, com certeza. <risos> que maravilha. Obrigadíssimo, Bárbara. Obrigadíssimo vocês por estarem aqui novamente com a gente e hoje terem nos acompanhado nesse mergulho ao que talvez seja um ótimo exemplo do novo normal. E, pessoal, na semana que vem teremos mais um convidado de peso. Então, não percam, nos encontramos aqui mesmo. Um abração, até lá.